Hello and welcome to another video in the lecture series entitled Advanced Biomaterials. So in our previous video we had seen about polymers. We had discussed what are polymers, what they are composed of. We had discussed some of the examples of natural and synthetic polymers, their monomeric units, how the polymerization takes place and also some of the classifications and major applications of polymers. We have also seen that how after polymerization reactions the properties of monomers uh, of the properties of the polymers are essentially different from that of the individual monomeric constituents. So in today's uh, video we will be looking at a very interesting uh, sub part of polymers or interesting construct using polymers which, has, which is known as hydrogels. So this hydrogels is a very interesting or an important uh, uh, important construct using polymers uh, construct using polymer technology so this hydrogel is a very special material uh, which is used in different fields in uh, biomedical engineering therapeutics uh, tissue engineering applications in uh, diagnosis as well and in different other applications in fields of modern science and technology so we'll be looking today at what are hydrogels what are their types how they are prepared what are their applications and how they can be used or how they can be developed for in future for treating very specific types of situations or specific types of scenarios, their applications in specific scenarios. We'll be looking at all these in detail. So hope you enjoy today's video. So without further ado, let's get it. So hydrogels, so what do we mean by? So what is the definition of hydrogels? Hydrogel is essentially a three-dimensional network of hydrophilic polymer that can swell in water and hold a large amount of solvent, in this case water, without dissolving. So a formal definition of a hydrogel would be that a hydrogel is a three-dimensional network of hydrophilic polymer that can swell in water and imbibe or hold without dissolving in them. This is the formal definition of what is known as a hydrogel. So the term hydrogel is composed of two words or two uh, sub parts of words, hydro and gel. So the term hydro signifies or implies water and the gel represents this uh, state of a material which has a jelly-like or gel-like consistency. So there are two types as we might have heard previously, sol and gel. There are several materials which can undergo the salt to gel or gel to salt transitions at a different uh, temperature or different conditions in which they are uh, subjected to. So this hydrogel is essentially a three-dimensional network of a polymer which is uh, which can actually uh, imbibe, uh, uh, which is hydrophilic in nature, that is it is water loving in nature and it can imbibe a large amount of water after it is synthesized without dissolving in them. So, Essentially, hydrogels can hold this large amount of water solvents, but they will not dissolve or solubilize after their synthesis. So, why is this property attributable to the hydrogels? That is because a special uh, criteria known as this cross linkage. So, So this pro special property of hydrogels is attributed to cross-linking. 
So this is because of chemical or physical cross-linking which holds the individual polymeric chains. So cross-linking is basically a force of a, a chemical interaction or a chemical bond or physical bond even in cases. So physical or chemical bonds which actually hold uh, two individual polymeric chains together and prevent their separating out or prevent them from coming apart when they are solubilized or when they are uh, uh, placed in an, uh, in an aqua solvent. So if these are two individual polymeric chains, say chain A and this is chain B, so individually these chains would be soluble in water if this would be an example of a hydrophilic polymer. So this is a hydrophilic polymer. So these chains would be now cross-linked. So if this is another chain, say chain C, so these cross-links would hold these individual chains and in an aqueous system or in an aqueous solvent now if we would see that these chains would be insoluble or in a, it will not be broken up so easily uh, when we are incubating them in an aqueous solvent. But in the dried state these chains would be highly shriveled up. The cross-links would exist but they would be shriveled up. So if we are incubating them in water, so the solvent molecules or the water molecules will fill up between these chains and cause the expansion or what is known as the swelling of the hydrogel. But because of these cross links, the individual chains will not come apart and the hydrogel's three-dimensional structure will remain intact. So, this will be in the shrunken or dried or unswollen state where these networks are highly intertwined and mesh held together by the cross links and once they are uh, once they are incubated in water or aqueous solvent so these water molecules will occupy the interstitials or the interfaces between the polymeric chains and this will cause swelling or increase in the volume of the hydrogel uh, through this process known as swelling. So this hydrogel will have a lot, a large amount of water in their chains and so this will be the swollen state of the hydrogel. So coming to this cross-linking, so there, this is possible through the use of different agents known as cross-linking agents. So these cross-linking agents can be of two types. physical crosslinkers or or the chemical crosslinkers so physical crosslinking agents or the chemical crosslinking agents so different natural and synthetic polymers can be used to synthesize these types of hydrogels which we will be looking at some somewhat in later somewhere in detail in later videos so uh, coming to the cross-linkers, the physical cross-linkers are the ones which uses some physical agent or some physical means to cause this cross-linking among the individual polymeric chains. So the property of physical cross-linking agents is that the cross-links are usually weaker and the cross-linkings are reversible. So, if a 
hydrogen is cross-linked using physical means, uh, different types of physical radiations can be used uh, to cause this uh, physical cross-linking in hydrogens, such as uh, in uh, UV, UV uh, radiation can be used in some cases to cause this uh, physical cross-linking. So the cross-linked hydrogen in such cases will be weaker and the cross-linking will be reversible. So after a particular, maybe a particular cycle or after reversing the conditions, so this cross-linking can be reversed and this cross-linking can break between the individual polymeric chains and again that system will become soluble in water. So physically cross-linked hydrogens have the advantage of being highly biocompatible. because of very less toxicity associated with them. Because we are not using any external or additional cross-linking agent and the natural polymer, if we are using a very biocompatible polymer in this case or in this instance, they can be used to, uh, they can be used in uh, several in vivo applications without the additional toxicity or hazard associated with other types of cross-linkers. So, biocompatibility and less toxicity is one of the most important advantage of using physical cross-linking agents. But in certain cases, it is necessary to maintain the structure and overall morphology of the material. So in such cases, in order to maintain uh, cross-links or in order to generate cross-links which are more rigid than physical, than it would be possible using physical cross-linking agents we opt for chemical crosslinkers. Chemical crosslinkers are the ones which causes these crosslinks through chemical bonds such as covalent bonds. So these chemical crosslinkers will crosslink or join these individual polymeric chains using covalent or specific other types of bonds which won't be physical interactions. So as we know, these types of bonds will be very strong and it will be very difficult to break these bonds using different, using normal physical, altering normal physical conditions. So once synthesized, these hydrogels will not dissolve in when placed in an aqua solvent or when it is subjected to other uh, dynamic conditions as well. So now we will come into some of the different types of hydrogels which can be synthesized. So let me raise out some of this part. of natural hydrogels would include uh, natural polymers which can be used to fabricate such hydrogels would include uh, hyaluronic acid chitosan Alginate and even fibrin. So all these are examples of natural process, natural uh, hydrogels. Again, synthetic hydrogels can be uh, polyvinyl alcohol. one of the most widely used uh, synthetic hydrogel material for the fabrication of thin uh, scaffolds or thin mattresses 
or thin even very thin membranes can also be fabricated using such a synthetic uh, polymers such as PVA polyethylene alcohol again polyethylene glycol can be used and different types of acrylates are also available which can be used for fabricating hydrogels so <clears throat> we have seen that uh, using different materials and different preparation techniques different types of hydrogels with different properties can be prepared based on any particular application for specific use uh, intended use for the hydrogel which we are trying to fabricate or synthesize so now let's come to another part which is after fabrication what are the different tests which we can use to uh, which we can perform on the hydrogels so uh, some important mechanical testing experiments which can be performed on these uh, hydrogels include so mechanical testing experiments include tension compression shear geometry and dynamic mechanical analysis or test tension compression shear geology and dynamic mechanical testings are some of the important mechanical testing experiments which can be performed <coughs> on hydrogels to give an idea or an estimation about the mechanical properties of the hydrogels so shear geometry uh, and other associated tests can be used to give light about the viscosity and the rheological properties of the hydrogels and uh, tension compression essentially gives rise uh, uh, essentially uh, gives an indication about the different uh, properties or the different uh, of the different moduli of the hydrogel such as uh, we know the young's moduli the bulk's moduli and the shear or the rigidity moduli of the hydrogels and uh, also the mechanical properties of these hydrogels can be tuned and modified through varying the crosslink concentration so these mechanical properties can also be changed during the synthesis procedure of the hydrogel and by uh, changing the crosslinker concentration so increasing the crosslinker would give rise to a rigid type of a material or a rigid or a hydrogel with rigid properties and with lowering the crosslinking concentration the material will be more flexible or more fluidic in nature so by changing the concentration of the cross linkers we can tune the properties of the hydrogel so uh a widely used chemical crosslinker is glutaraldehyde for fabrication and synthesis of different membranes but glutaraldehyde has certain amount of toxicity associated with it therefore newer crosslinkers are being developed or being used for replacing glutaraldehyde so the polyvinyl alcohol membranes or a thin hydrogel matrices can be prepared using glutaraldehyde as a crosslinker by varying the crosslinker from 0.2 to 1% to even 2% we can get the hydrogels with different physical properties or different mechanical properties which can be determined using these uh, tests
So varying the concent uh, concentration of the cross-linker enables us to get hydrogels with different mechanical properties or it can be used to tailor the properties of the hydrogels which we are trying to synthesize. Now we will also look at some of the other characterization of the hydrogels or the physiological characterization of the hydrogels if we are trying to use them for certain in vivo applications or once we are trying to use these hydrogels which uh, will be in association with certain biological fluids or liquids then what are the characterizations which we can use. So there are two important uh, characterizations which can be performed on such uh, after synthesizing such hydrogels they are the swelling and degradation. So before starting into swelling and degradation, let's talk about a very simple method of preparation of hydrogels which can be performed in any routine lab. So the name of that method which can be used for preparation of such types of hydrogels is a very simple method known as solution casting. So in this method of solution casting what is essentially done is that we mix a given polymer, we may heat it also in order to uh, make it homogeneous in nature and we can add this cross linker in it. So this will be poly polymer solution. Now this polymer solution can be a single one if we are trying to make the hydrogel using an individual polymer, a single type of polymeric species. Or if you are trying to mix more than two polymers, it can be a blended hydrogen. Right? If you are trying to use more than one polymer or two polymers uh, in, in trying to fabricate this hydrogen. So this polymer solution will be made in water and will be placed in a beaker and we can actually place it in a uh, hot magnetic uh, hot plate with the magnetic shaker with hot plate and add this cross linker. Then shake it at a given temperature for a particular interval of time. Then this solution will be cast in a glass petri plate. And after casting So this will be a glass we will leave it overnight in a in a hot air oven after that we will see a very thin film of hydrogen which will be deposited in the bottom of the glass plate which we can remove using forceps. So this will be our thin hydrogel film which we can remove from the bottom of this glass petri plate. So this is a simple, a very simple fabrication method for synthesizing hydrogens. So, if we are trying to characterize this hydrogel, so we can perform swelling and degradation studies. So for performing swelling studies, we can use this hydrogel film. So this circular film, we can cut it into small pieces, small square or rectangular pieces. So square pieces will be 1 cm into 1 cm, rectangular pieces can be 2 cm into 1 cm and we will find out their individual weights. 
after finding out their individual weights we will place them in an aqueous solution now this swelling can be performed in different ph conditions as well so that will be ph dependent swelling we can do it in ph of 4 at an acidic ph of 7 at neutral and ph 9.2 to uh, you know simulate the alkaline conditions so after putting them in this solution these individual pieces in the solution we will incubate them for different time points so let's say that we are incubating them for a period of one hour then we will take them out so before putting them inside the solution we will find out their weight which will be weight weight not w not or initial weight After placing them in the solution and incubating them, we will remove this piece. So this will be the swollen hydrogel. We will again determine its weight. So this final weight will be W. So this swelling will be calculated as percentage swelling as final weight minus initial weight by initial weight into 100%. So Percentage swelling will be calculated as the final weight of the swollen hydrogel which is taken after incubating them in a solution at a, for a particular period of time, say one hour, we can perform it for 24 hours and we can do this by taking out the hydrogel piece and measuring its weight after given points of time. So one hour, two hour, three hour, till 24 hours so we can get a curve for time dependent swelling. So let's say for simplicity's sake we are taking out the membrane for one, after one hour. So percentage swelling after one hour will be the final weight, the final weight of this piece of hydrogel minus the initial weight of this piece of hydrogel by divided by the initial weight into 100. So this will be the percentage swelling. Now, so how to find out percentage degradation? So let me erase out this part so we can get space. So the concept behind finding out the percentage degradation is that after incubating the piece of hydrogen membrane in the aqueous solution we can, we, uh, uh, there is some amount of material which can be actually be solubilized inside the solution. So in order to find out the amount of material that is lost from the initial weight of the material, we find out the percentage degradation or the amount of material from the hydrogel that is degraded after it is incubated in this particular solution. So in order to find out percentage degradation, we take out the the membrane after the, the hydrogen piece after it is incubated say for one hour then we completely dry it in a hot air oven then we find out its weight right so let's say this weight after drying not the swelling weight but the weight after drying is WF right so this weight will be essentially less than the initial weight of the hydrogen which is W0 so in order to find out the percentage degradation it will be calculated as the initial weight 
minus the final weight by the initial weight into 100. So, this will be the percentage degradation value. Right? So, these are some of the two important physiological characterization of the hydrogens. So, this is important if we are trying to incorporate these hydrogels in inside biological systems wherein they can come into contact with biological fluids. So, that is why it is essential to find out the swelling and degradation, uh, percentage swelling and degradation of the hydrogen. So now with this we will come to the last part of today's video which is uh, the different types of applications of these hydrogens where in which they can be applied. Right? So uses and applications of the hydrogen. So, they, these hydrogels are used in different fields of the industrial and the healthcare uh, sector as well. So, one of them, their important uses are that they are used in ocular implants. Such as fabrication of intraocular lenses to be implanted inside the eye and uh, they are also used in breast implants. Such as the fabrication, uh, such as the uh, silicone based, based in breast implants. And they are also used in fabrication of different wound healing or wound regeneration templates. And also these hydrogels are very uh, favorite candidates for studying different, for fabricating different drug delivery vehicles. And finally, the arguably the most important use of hydrogels in today's uh, healthcare industry is that they are used as cathodes in tissue engineering. So, in our future videos, we will be looking at the, your, the, the uh, role of hydrogels is as scaffolds in tissue engineering, how they are fabricated, what are their potential applications, with which areas or in which fields they can be used. Uh, we will be looking in detail about some of interesting considerations such as artificial skin regeneration templates and artificial uh, nerve regeneration scaffolds as well, bone regeneration scaffolds, so scaffolds for skin and nerve tissue repair. So as we have discussed these scaffolds show the property of tailorability. We can we will see how these scaffolds can be fabricated, what is the what would be the rationale behind the fabrication of such scaffolds for these specific types of application. So with this we will end today's video. So we had discussed about hydrogels how they are important, how they are synthesized, what is the role of cross links and how they have, uh, how they can be uh, used in different types of applications, how we can prepare them, how we can characterize them if we are trying to use them for in vivo applications or we are trying to use them alongside biological systems. So how we can uh, perform swelling and degradation studies to uh, evaluate the efficacy of our hydrogel systems and finally the different types of uh, applications or different fields in which these hydrogels can be synthesized and fabricated. 
So with this we will end today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Till then, thank you.